Hi there, this is Max from Iridescent Color, and this is the promised hue compressor follow-up video. In this one I will dive a little bit deeper into what you need to be aware of when using this as a look tool, uh, especially when using it in linear. So brace yourselves, this one will be a little bit geeky. I hope you like hues. So as I've already demonstrated in the last video, using the hue compressor in linear can often give us more natural looking, preferable results. Here's a quick comparison between the same adjustment in log versus linear. There's obviously nothing wrong with either, I just personally find the linear version more appealing. There is however a problem you can run into in some edge cases, and it looks something like this. Sometimes doing hue adjustments in linear, either with the hue compressor or with the hue knob in the primaries panel, we can get these crazy highlights. There is a good chance this will never happen to you, but if it does, don't panic. There's something we can do. The answer to why this is happening is a little bit complicated, but if you stick with me, I promise as a reward, I'll reveal to you my favorite secret weapon that will instantly improve all of your looks without you having to lift a finger. And I promise this is not a bait, I'm serious. You ready? Okay, let's look at some cubes. The first thing to know is that this tool uses Thatcher Freeman's cylindrical color model to calculate its hue rotations. Other techniques for hue rotations like say HSL or HSV, or even Tetra for that matter, kind of always move the colors along the edge of the cube. To do this, they need to take these sharp corners here. Models like cylindrical or the hue knob in the color page take a different approach. As you can see, they simply rotate the entire cube around the achromatic axis. Since this is just one elegant operation with no sudden changes in direction, we can expect this to be a smoother and thus superior technique, but it does come with a quirk. As you can see, when I rotate this cube, the nature of this rotation makes it so that some colors will leave the boundaries of the cube. Now see what happens if I also wrap this adjustment in a linear sandwich. We cause a ripple in the space-time continuum, breaking the laws of physics and taking the whole universe with us. This is precisely what we're seeing in the highlights of this image here. Now you may or may not be surprised to see how crazy this cube looks, since most of our images seem to look perfectly fine even in the sandwich. And the reason is of course that Da Vinci White Gamut Intermediate is an enormous color space whose outer bounds extend way beyond the colors you will find in most images captured by a camera sensor in a real world scenario. The cube of a Isabella image for example looks like this. And if we do the hue rotation here, the cube still looks relatively reasonable, but with this image here, something is happening that makes these highlights go crazy. And this is where our image formation pipeline becomes really important. If you're stuck with me so far, I'm happy to tell you that I'm very close to revealing my secret weapon to you. To follow along with this workflow, it's important that you color manage in nodes, since you just don't have enough control over your image formation pipeline otherwise. The reason why we're seeing these issues in this particular image is actually relatively simple. This is just a Rec 709 clip that I color managed into DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate with the standard settings for tone mapping. So it unrolls the highlights all the way to 10,000 nits. This isn't really very reasonable, so I'm going to set the maximum output here to something sensible between 300 and 1,000 nits. And there we go, problem solved. Now it's possible that you might encounter some edge case footage like VFX shots for example where you might run into the same problem and this fix isn't an option. And in this case there's also something on the output side that we can change. Okay, here's the reveal of the free secret tool. The first step we want to take is head to this page and here we can donate an amount of our choice to the author Juan Pablo Zambrano. Juan Pablo is an absolute folk hero in the color world, so I think this step is very crucial. Once we're done, we can head over to GitHub to download this DCTL called 2499. This will replace our output CST. The first thing we can see right away is how much preferable a rendering of our image we get without even touching anything else. This is because 2499 is a much more refined and well-tuned output transform than the standard CST in Resolve. 
But if we go back to our problem shot here, you can also see that it has seemingly magically fixed our crazy highlight problem. The reason is the much superior gamut compression in 2499. So even if you don't encounter any problems, you might just want to start using 2499 as your default DRT because it gives you a much better starting point for your grades. Another alternative I would like to mention here is Jed Smith's Open DRT, uh, which is another free alternative. With this one, we can use the purity compression slider to impact how much these crazy highlights are being reined in. But I think that's enough for today. I hope this was interesting and helpful to you. And I very much recommend trying out these alternative output transforms and seeing how they can improve your workflows and your grades. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.